Hey, good morning, Aspire Church. I'm so glad that you have joined me and, and are worshiping with us today. Uh, in a moment, we're gonna sing a song together and then we're gonna continue our series, Jesus Culture. And today I'm gonna talk about prayer. Uh, hey, I wanna thank you so much for just being faithful with your tithes and offerings. Uh, by you being faithful, we've been able to continue our ministry here at Aspire, but also to impact people in our community, as well as help people uh, through Send Relief, an organization we partner with, helping people that have been impacted by Hurricane Laura. Uh, if you'd like to give to that, or if you'd like to just give uh, through tithes and offerings, you can actually pick up your phone right now and text the word Aspire Church, one word, Aspire Church, to 77977. You can also go online to AspireTucson.com and give, give that way. Also, I want to tell you about a great meeting we're going to have next Sunday night. It's called Starting Point. If you don't know what that is, then you've probably never been to Starting Point. We're going to do it at 6 p.m. next Sunday night, and it's really the beginning point uh, for those of you that uh, are interested in making Aspire your church home. It's really talking about how you can make an impact in your life, not only where you are, where you live, work, and play, but also um, you know, globally. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to talking to you about that. I'd love for you to join me if you've never been to Starting Point. You can email me at brian at aspiretucson.com. And I'd love to see you next Sunday night. Hey, let's, let's worship God together. You know, when I got to be about 14 years old, I started thinking about girls. No, not just thinking about their existence, but you know what I mean, thinking about girls. And uh, I wanted a girlfriend. I didn't think I'd ever have one. There was a show on TV called Wonder Woman. And, you know, I thought that's, that's the girlfriend I, I want. No, not the, the, the new Wonder Woman 1984 version, but Linda Carter. Oh, I had a crush on her. And, uh, and I wanted to, you know, maybe go on a date. Well, I'll tell you what, I've never, never went on a date with Linda Carter and never even really met her. And now she's close to 80 years old and those feelings have kind of, kind of waned. But, uh, you know, I prayed to God that he would give me a girlfriend and it wasn't Linda Carter. He didn't answer my prayer. But hey, I got a great, great wife, 21 years with Jessica Hook. She is my Wonder Woman and she is so much better than Linda Carter and uh, so thankful for her. You know, another prayer that I had, a car. You know, when you get to be about 15 and a half, you get your driver's permit and you begin those classes I wanted a car and I prayed to God. I said, please give me, give me a car. And you know what? He did. I got a Buick Skylark. My parents uh, gave me one that was in the family and we got a $99 Earl Scheid paint job on it, two-tone. And, uh, and that was my car through high school. And uh, God answered my prayer. He gave, gave me a car. You know, today we're going to talk about prayer. And, you know, sometimes we think about prayer kind of like I'm describing. Sometimes you pray and God answers it, and sometimes you pray, and he doesn't answer it the way you want, and that's kind of where your, your thought life of prayer goes. Well, if you, if you toss a coin, and 50% of the time you get your prayer answered, and sometimes you don't, maybe you continue to pray, but sometimes your prayers don't get answered the way you want, and your prayer life wanes, and you just stop praying. You know, God has much more for us than that type of prayer life, and today in Matthew 7, he continues the Sermon on the Mount, greatest sermon ever preached, and he comes to prayer. It's not the first time he mentions prayer in the Sermon on the Mount. It's actually, uh, he says it numerous times, but he comes to this point, and, and this passage isn't so much about prayer as it is about our attitude towards God as it relates to prayer. You know, last week we talked about our attitude towards our brothers and sisters and judging, and now it comes to this passage about prayer. Matthew 7, and we start with verse 7. It says, ask and you will receive. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Everyone who asks will receive. Everyone who searches will find. And the door will be open for everyone who knocks. Would any of you give your hungry child a stone if the child asked for some bread? Would you give your child a snake if the child asked for a fish? As bad as you are, you still know how to give good gifts to your children. But your Heavenly Father is even more ready to give good things to the people who ask. Let's pray. Dear Father, as we 
come before you. And as we pray right now, we ask, we ask for your blessings upon today. We, we seek you, Lord, with our heart and our minds right now. Open our, we open our hearts and minds to show us what you want. And Lord, I believe today we will find, we will find uh, what we're looking for in you, answers that will help us to go deeper in our prayer life. So Lord, today we ask, we seek, and we're knocking. Even though we're online right now, Lord, you've worked in powerful ways. Your Holy Spirit is not limited by where we are. And you can speak to people right where they are, in their apartments, on their phone, in their living room. And I pray for them right now. I pray blessings upon them as we enter into this important subject on prayer. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Lifeway Research says this. 31% of Americans pray several times a day. That's pretty good. 87% of those Americans pray for a family or friend. And 42% of those prayers are about their own sin. Among Americans who pray, 21% have prayed to win the lottery. And 13% have prayed for their favorite team to win. I know today is the beginning of the NFL season for many of you, and some of you are praying for a win. Of course, those are just statistics, but what about you? Are you asking God for things? Are you seeking him and knocking on the spiritual door to see if he will answer? Well, let's face it, many are praying, but some of you have stopped. There was a day when your prayer life was much stronger than it is now, and I pray today that you will turn and go back to those times, those quiet times, early in the morning or late at night before you go to bed or maybe noon, you'd spend the whole time praying. You know, if there was a time when your prayer life was stronger, I bet during that time your faith was stronger in God. I believe there were probably some things that were going on in your life that may not be going on right now. And it has to do with prayer. You see, prayer is our opportunity to talk to God and for him to talk to us. You see, it's not a religious activity to be a Jesus follower. It's a relationship and prayer is vital. And as we look at this passage, it talks about asking and seeking and knocking. You know, maybe God seems distant to you right now, but maybe by the end of this message, you can begin to lean in and begin to, to once again talk to him. You know, God wants to speak to his kids. This term father in this passage uh, really can be interpreted daddy. It's a very personal uh, name for God, you know, uh, to, 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 to use this type of language then when Jesus said it, 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 if it wasn't God himself saying it, it would almost feel sacrilegious to say, you want me to call God daddy, but it's an intimate, intimate name for God. You see, God wants you to just climb up in his lap and talk to him. He wants to hug you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to listen to the things that are going on in your life. He says, ask and seek and knock. He means it. Maybe it's hard for you sometimes to understand talking to a father because you're earthly father and you didn't have the greatest of relationships. But you know, maybe some of you had a better relationship with your mom and maybe you can put, put that relationship in perspective to to this asking and seeking and knocking. You know, if, if you uh, talk to your mom, you know, maybe she's neither um, visible or near you and you have to seek her. But if she's right there, if she's near and she's visible, what are you gonna do? You're gonna ask her something. If she's not, you're gonna seek her out. You're gonna find her. And maybe she's just um, doing something, maybe in the bedroom or something. What would you do? You knock on the door and you say, Mom, I wanna talk to you. So this is just simply saying, Pursue God, ask him, seek him, knock. And these wonderful statements here, Jesus even elaborates on it. He says, everyone who asks will receive. Everyone who searches will find and the door will be opened for everyone who knocks. What a powerful truth we have here in this passage. But you know, maybe there's numerous reasons why you don't pray. You know, you know some that I've encountered with people is, you don't believe God hears you. 
You know, you ask and you seek and you knock and you think, you know, he listens to other people, but not me. Or maybe you don't believe prayer is necessary. You know, people, you look at it and you think, you know, people seem to be getting what they want. I've prayed and sometimes I get something, sometimes I don't. And it seems as if the people that don't even have a relationship with God are getting food and clothing and all those kind of things. And, and I just want you to pause for a moment, just let you, let you know this. Because they receive something and you receive something, that should say something about God's mercy and his grace for both groups. You know, the Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. So don't let that keep you from your prayer life because, you know, yeah, they are going to get food. They are going to get clothing. And, and they, you might look at them and say, how in the world could God take care of them? But you know, God's grace cannot be figured out from humanity's perspective. It has to come from God. And God is so much more gracious than I ever would be towards humans. But God loves us. And I believe this teaching on prayer is much more than, than creator God's giving of good creative gifts. I think it's more about the Father giving deep redemptive gifts to his children. Those are, those are deeper gifts. He wants to do things that are much deeper. You know, he wants to see salvation come to people. It says, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Have you ever called upon God's name? Maybe you've asked him for things, but the first prayer you should pray to him is, God, I ask that you come into my life and save me. I need you. Do you ask God for forgiveness? Do you ask and seek and knock about forgiveness? Do you ask for him to deliver you from evil? Do you ask for him to give you peace in the midst of the storm? Maybe, maybe it's not praying the storm goes away. Maybe it's a matter of you being on the boat with God and saying, you know what, would your presence come to me even in the midst of this storm? Even in the midst of this pandemic, maybe you're praying that the pandemic be removed. Maybe you need to pray, God, would you give me peace in the midst of the pandemic? Maybe it's increased faith. Maybe it's, I need God, I need you to, to give me more, more faith to, to move forward, more hope. Lord, would you give me more love toward my neighbor? Would you give me more love toward my enemies? You know what? God will answer those prayers because those are redemptive prayers that a father gives his kids. You know that he's gonna answer those prayers to give you peace and to give you hope and to give you love and to give you deliverance. Maybe you don't believe God even exists. Maybe you're listening to me today and you're an atheist. You know, one out of four people in our country uh, claim to be atheists atheist now. It's a very large group of people in our country that just don't believe in God. Our country is um, a, a very unchurched and, 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 a, and a nation of unbelievers right now. It's a godless nation. The nation that we have right now is not the nation of our grandparents. And we're seeing the godlessness of people rise up, you know, and I would say to you, if you don't believe in God, how's your joy right now? How's your peace? How's your, how, how are you, do you feel full of joy? Do you feel full of, of purpose and meaning? You know that Jesus followers are some of the most joyful people on the face of the earth. They are because their joy doesn't rest in themselves. It rests in God. They have peace more than other people because their peace rests in God. Maybe you don't believe God exists. Maybe you once did. Maybe you're more agnostic and you look at it and say, I don't even know if God exists anymore. You know, when you stop talking to somebody, you stop spending time with them. You, you aren't as engaged in, in their interests anymore. You actually sometimes even forget what they look like. You forget what they act like. You forget what they sound like sometimes. And for some of you, you were closer to God, but you've drifted away and you've questioned God's existence. Well, trust me, your lack of prayer and your question of whether God exists or not doesn't change the fact that God is unchanging. He is as real today as he ever has. He is moving more in the world than he ever has. God is alive and well, and he wants to spend time with you. Ask, seek, knock. This progression of asking and seeking and knock, knocking is best understood if we understand three things. We must discover God. We must have confidence in God and we ourselves must desire what God wants. 
So the first is discover God. So understand this very simple way of praying. You must develop the right attitude towards God. And to develop the right attitude towards God, you really need to view him in the right way. You know, this may surprise some of you, but God's not a genie. God is not up in heaven right now waiting for you to pray and he gives you three wishes. God is not a genie. He does not exist to fulfill your deepest desires. You see, once you align your desires with his, then there's a relationship there. And it's not a relationship of genie. It's a relationship of king and child. It is a relationship of a holy God and somebody that is only by God's grace, even in his presence. That's a different attitude that we have when we pray. God is not a genie. God is not a slot machine. He's not somebody you can go to whenever you want and just pull the slot machine and hope that, wow, maybe it'll, maybe I'll, I'll, my luck will play out. And for some of you, look at your prayer life that way. You think, I may get something, I may not. Chances are, I probably won't. That's a slot machine type of attitude. And here's something else that you, it may surprise you. God's not you. God's not you. God, God doesn't have the same desires as a human does a separated human that's separated by sin. You see, as you understand God more and spend more time with him, what happens is his desires become your desires, not the other way around, not your desires become his desires. As you become, get more knowledge of who God is, you begin to go about this asking and seeking and knocking in a different way because you really understand who he is and what his plans are and what he would actually um, give you. And so you ask and you seek and knock based upon that. And, and he's a good father. We see this in verse nine. Would any of you give your hungry child a stone if the child asked for some bread? Would you give your child a snake if the child asked for a fish? In verse 11, as bad as you are, and what, in other words, as different as you are, as evil as you are as humans, it says here, you still know how to give good gifts to your children, but your heavenly father is even more ready to give good things to people who ask. In other words, you wouldn't do that. You'd be a good dad, a good mom to your kids. And, and God's saying, you know, you're limited. I am supernatural. I am a perfect father. How much more can I give good gifts? In other words, he's saying, I want to give you things. I want to heap it upon you. I want to heap blessings upon you. I want to deliver you. I want to forgive you. I want to see God's kingdom expanded through your life. You're good moms and dads, but you are a far cry from the heavenly father. He knows what you need. He also knows where you're headed. Jesus isn't just talking about giving you common necessities here. He's talking about giving you opportunities and blessings and spiritual direction to expand his kingdom. And you know, even as an earthly father, a, a, a father who's not near as good of a father as our heavenly father, you know, I want more for my kids than just taking care of their clothing and giving them a car and giving them some lucky charms for breakfast. You know, God, God, is, God wants much more for us than just the basic necessities. How much more does God the Father want to speak to, to your kids and give them purpose and meaning? And how much more does he want to talk to you? and tell you things that are deep within him and deep within his heart. He wants to tell you things. He, he has so much in store for you in the future. For some of you right now, I'm speaking to somebody that's hopeless right now. God wants to restore hope in your life. You know, the absence of hope makes you sick and you've lost hope and direction. And I want you to come to God and ask him for things and seek him with all your heart like never before. And I want you to knock and say, God, I, I want this for my life. I want you to show me your purposes and your meaning. God wants you to, to, to expand the kingdom. He wants you to walk by faith. He wants you to go to places in the world and to work through you to expand his kingdom. He wants to do something in 2021 that, that, that will blow your mind if you'll only spend time with him and talk with him. Number two, it's not just... It's not just uh, uh, you know, thinking about God and discovering God, it is actually having confidence in him. It's one thing to 
to, to, to get to know him. But then it's another thing to believe. He can do it. As we humble ourselves and know that God is bigger than me, we place our faith in him and we say, God, you can do it. I can't. Would you live your life through me? Would, would your life overflow out of my life? And would I see things happen that I never could have done on my own? And God can do that. I believe he can. Have confidence that he is able to, to, to cause his will to be done through your life. It says here, but your heavenly father is even more ready to give good things to people who ask. My God is able. You know my earthly dad? He could catch me. Let me explain. When I uh, would learn how to swim, he'd say, jump to me. Just jump to me. And I was scared to death. But you know what? I eventually jumped because I knew that my, my earthly father would catch me. He wanted me to learn how to swim, and he knew that I needed to jump. I needed to get into the water. And, you know, God is asking you to jump. Have confidence in him that he's going to catch you. You know, my Heavenly Father has a great track record with me. 100% of the time, he catches me. When he wants me to do something and I jump out there and he lives his life through me, by faith, I just step out and he does it. Have confidence. Some of you have have found uh, Christianity to be mundane and maybe even boring and ritualistic now. And I would say that many times that happens when we don't walk by faith and we lose confidence in God. Or maybe there's something that God has already told you to do and you still haven't taken that step. You know, it's, there's an old game show called Let's Make a Deal. Uh, we can't play Let's Make a Deal to God. We can't say, you know, if it's, if it's door number two and he says go through that door, you can't pick door number three. God wants you to take that step. Have confidence that he is going to work in and through you as you take that step. So it's not just, you know, believing in God and knowing him. It's having confidence that he can do it. And then thirdly, you've got to desire it. You've got to desire it. We can know what God wants and even believe God can grant it, but we must desire it. We must align our lives with him. You know, Psalm 37, 4 says this, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Many times we like to read the last part of that verse. He will give you the desires of your heart. No, 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 you got to back up. Delight yourself in the Lord. In other words, discover God. Discover him, put your confidence in him. Walk by faith. You know what happens when you do that? You're asking and you're seeking and you're knocking and you're getting to know him more and you're building confidence in him. And what was a step of faith is now a faithful journey for you. For you. And now you are, you're faith-filled, you're walking with him and your desires are his desires. Because you've spent so much time with him and now you've delighted yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you've given up on prayer, trust again. Begin to discover God for who he is and not just who you want him to be. He is God. Have confidence in him. Have faith in him. Then pray for your desires to be in line with his. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me. And when you seek me with all your heart, He's saying, seek me, seek me. Maybe you don't think I'm near to you. Maybe you think that I'm, I'm far from you. Seek me out. Well, God is everywhere. What he's saying is you, you need to put some action into this relationship. You need to seek him. You need to ask him. You need to seek him. You need to knock. I found through prayer, God has changed my life. God's done it, but through prayer, you see, God, God answers me. He talks to me, and through prayer, I hear him, and I step out, and sometimes I, I don't answer the call. Sometimes I don't, but many times I do, and it changes my life. You know, through prayer, he saved me. As a 13-year-old, I turned from my sins and turned to him, and I went from a natural sinner to a supernatural saint. Only the Holy Spirit could do that. Through prayer, he saved me. I prayed. I said, God, would you, would you save me? And he did. 
Right now, he could save you. Just call out to him, cry out to him. He will save you through prayer. Through prayer, he rescued me. He's rescued me through so many problems in my life. He rescued me out of the pit of divorce. All through that, I thought I lost my two oldest kids. But through prayer, he's given me back those kids that I have lost. Through prayer, he's reestablished me as a minister of the gospel. Through prayer, he has given me a wonderful wife in Jessica Hook of 21 years. Through prayer, he has brought us a son, Noah Hook, who celebrated on Friday his 15th birthday. Through prayer, his biological sister, Faith, was, had a premature birth, and, and, and she actually was given life. And then the birth parents of Noah gave faith to us. Through prayer, through prayer, she's miraculously in our life and continuing to grow, growing in her relationship with God. Through prayer, our oldest son is getting married to a wonderful godly woman, JC, who's a doctor and loves missions. Through prayer, God has called us to Tucson to start Aspire Church. And through prayer, God has, has allowed us to meet you and to connect you to this wonderful kingdom work that that God is doing. He's connected us to so many people through prayer. Through prayer, he's taken us through COVID-19, hadn't he? Through prayer, he's taking us through this civil unrest. Through prayer, in the midst of what we're seeing, in the midst of this storm, he's giving us peace as we seek him and put our eyes on him. Through prayer, through prayer, we're gonna see his kingdom come. His will be done in Tucson as it is in heaven. And through prayer, we will see every man and woman and child hear about the good news of Jesus Christ and give them an opportunity to accept Christ as their savior. And get this, we know that Jesus Christ is gonna return for his church and we will be caught up in a moment and we will meet our savior through prayer. We pray for that. It's persistent, active faith, confident in him because our desires have become his desires. These are the prayers that we must pray. This is the God that we must know and believe in. I have confidence in God because I've asked. I've sought him out. I've found a father that is faithful and true. I've discovered that God is a good father. He is able to answer my prayers and I want to be like him. And the more I'm like him, the more my prayers are aligned with his will as I ask, as I seek, and as I knock. Would you join me in this journey of prayer? Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for those that today may pray for the first time to trust you. Lord, if there's somebody here, may they reach out to me online and Reach out and say, I want to know more about Jesus. Maybe even this moment they can just say, God, I trust you with my life. I give you my life. I turn from my life. Save me, Lord. Others that have drifted away, they need to come back to you. Lord, would you reestablish prayer lives? Lord, may we be a church of prayer. May we be a church that is constantly talking to you and seeking you and pursuing you not just for the basics of life, but for things that will shake the world with the kingdom of God. Lord, may Aspire be a church that makes disciples, multiplies the church here and sees your kingdom come. It's gonna take people that pray. You know that. So Lord, I pray that this message will touch people and they will become men, men and women, boys and girls of prayer. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Let's worship God. The splendor of a king.
trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning Great. 